Welcome to Nollywood Radio France. Your host is Cyprian Josu. This program has been brought to you by Nollywood Croissants Magazine. Additional support is provided by our partner Ubaudi Omondiwe, Goodwill Ambassador, Nollywood actress, singer, songwriter, humanitarian and victim advocate. Please stay tuned. <music> It's Nollywood Radio France. Your host is Super and Joseph. Please stay tuned. Nollywood and uh, globalization. Yeah. So I have seven articles that are available on the internet. Oh, really? Yes. I'm, not... I'm, I'm, I'm recording. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, my uh, first film that is about Nollywood and globalization is titled um, Nigerian Video Film as a Minor Transnational Practice. Text, um, an internet journal, and it's available. It was published in 2007. Okay. Um, I have also published a book chapter recently titled um, "Charting Nollywood's um, Appeal Globally and Local uh, and Globally and Locally." Okay. So I've also written that article, um, and which was published in um, 2010, okay. and which is available. Okay. And I can get you uh, further information about it later on. Okay. One of the interesting things about Nollywood is that it has spread around the world. It is globalized, but, but it represents a different kind of globalization. Okay. It is not the globalization that we associate with American popular culture. Because the globalization that we associate with American popular culture is driven by transnational capitalist corporations. Right. This is not the case with Nollywood. Yeah. It is individual vendors, small-scale vendors, who on their own take a couple of films, often pirated, to different locations around the world and sell them. Um, and, and so this represents a new pattern for globalization. A pattern for globalization that doesn't depend on um, American capital. It doesn't depend on huge corporations. It depends on small-scale individuals taking, taking something that they know has value and selling it around the world and making money from it. And this is a way that Nollywood first spread. Nollywood did not first spread because even the directors of Nollywood wanted to spread it that way. It spread because of these small-time traders yeah. and piracy. And so when I travel across West Africa in other countries such as going into Ghana, into Mali, um, Ivory Coast, I always go to the local market and see what is being sold and I find Nollywood there. I find Nollywood there. Not only do I find Nollywood there, I find Nollywood like where I live in Sacramento, California. Right? You go to any small town that has an African diaspora in the United States, you will find Nollywood being sold. So this represents a new form of transnationalism, a new form of globalization. In fact, the recent involvement of companies like Mnet, like um, um, Nollywood um, TV in France, that's actually a new level of the globalization of Nollywood and it's, it, it's a secondary level. The primary level of um, Nollywood globalization was driven by private companies, private individuals working without the backing of transnational capital, working without, and, and this is what is most exciting about Nollywood because it teaches us what can be done when you don't have massive resources at your disposal. And then how can we go forward from there? From from here, mm -hmm. in your opinion, how can we go forward? Mm -hmm. What are your suggestions? Uh, you know, I, I'm going to speak about that a little bit tomorrow during the uh, conference. I'm there tomorrow, you, I, I live in Shaft. Oh, you live in Shaft? Yeah, um, yeah. The little bit I would say for yeah. now is that um, while I think more needs to be done at the level of cinemas, I actually do think it is things like. Um, I actually do think it is going to be um, internet, live streaming, and all these other avenues. If those, if, if connection can be formalized, I actually think that that's going to be the future for the distribution of Nollywood, more so than the cinema. I, and I say that based on what the experience we are seeing in the United States, because in the United States we are seeing that um, increasingly. Even the top films spend only a short amount of time in cinema. And now you, you, you talked about your students. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, how, um, how is the uh, Nollywood uh, phenomenon uh, touching them? Because you, you oh, no, they, 
they, they enjoy the Nollywood films. They yeah. love the Nollywood films, and they often get them from these small markets. Yes. Yes, they get them from these small markets. Um, you know, obviously there are Nigerian um, immigrant children who are thinking about, you know, learning about culture. But there are also lots of non-Nigerians because the place where I am, California, is very international. Okay. So there are lots, as I said, there are students from Afghanistan. Yeah. There are students from um, different countries in Africa, from Congo, from Somalia, from Sudan. Um, there are students from um, 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 other, from the Middle East, right? And they have all heard of Nollywood from at home. Their mothers watch Nollywood. So they've all already seen Nollywood. So that's why I said uh, um, the market for Nollywood is already there, especially with the younger generation. It's not something that you have to work for. And if there are legal means of access, they will go for it. The only reason why piracy is so important, even internationally, is because for now, we don't yet have enough options for legal access to Nollywood. Thank you very much. That's great. I know. Yes. I